Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special report from the Pod Bay Doors podcast. Um, Doug and I wanted to take some time out to talk about um, a current topic that's going on in the world um, and just kind of give our, our feedback on it. I'm Jerry Dean Roberts, by the way, and across from me is my co-host, Doug Heller. Hello. And we wanted to talk about this thing going on with, with Gone with the Wind. If you don't know, last week um, this uh, this piece came up on USA Today from a writer named Maria Puente uh, regarding the Orpheum Theater in Memphis, Tennessee, and its decision to remove Gone with the Wind from its festival, from its uh, uh, classic festival, uh, because of the complaints of certain organizations, certain people about the film being racially insensitive. And we just kind of had to get our get our feet into this conversation because we love movies. Mm-hmm. We've seen this movie many times. Many times. And we wanted to put our input into this. Yeah. Um, Doug, if you'd like to give your <laughs> thoughts on this. Well, it's tricky because um, you actually just told me about told me about this. I'd I'd kind of been cut off um, work working on a few uh, things that were not related to contemporary films uh, over the last week and a half or so, half a week really. But so you told me about this, and I'm, I was like, okay, well, first of all. The movie was made in 1939, which would mean that it's 78 years old. I There aren't very many uh, 78 or 80 year old things that aren't racially insensitive. Right. <laughs> Especially I mean, in the movie. <laughs> I mean, the, the uh, representation is a, is a topic that comes up quite a bit in my household. Um, and so I, t- I've gotten to talk about this a lot with, with my wife and back in 39, this was probably one of the better representations you were going to get outside of say the Jack Benny show, uh, mm-hmm. with R- Rochester, uh, played by Eddie Anderson, or um, even earlier, uh, the the picture uh, Hallelujah, which mm-hmm. was actually probably one of the best representations of of Black Americans um, in the movies until like the '60s <laughs> and and, yeah. and and beyond. Really, um, you get to a film like Nothing But a Man, right? And and you know. It wasn't until the civil rights movement that people started to bring up the fact that uh, black people were shown usually as as uh, mentally inferior, intellectually inferior, uh, prone to superstition, uh, uh, scared about just about anything. Um, but Gone with the Wind, and you had brought this up. When, when we were talking, that, that David O. Selznick, Pittsburgh native, mm-hmm. David O. Selznick, my neck of the woods, uh, feared that this would get the same reaction that Birth of a Nation did. Right. Which, Birth of a Nation, even though it was made, uh, debuted in 1915, um, there was a lot of strong sentiment against it, as much as there was for it, um, being so close to the end of the civil war that you know there were still civil war veterans that were alive when birth of a nation came out mm-hmm. <laughs> the reaction of selznick was simply to um and i've never read the book of gone with the wind the reaction of selznick was simply to pull back on the um the slavery issue and focus more on the love story right and 
if you think about it, that is perfectly in keeping with movies of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked before about um, when we watch a period piece, it's more indicative of the time that it was in, made in than the time that it's set in. Mm-hmm. So when you look at it, uh, first and foremost, um, Hattie McDaniel's character of Nami. Well, yes, it's a stereotype role. She plays it unstereotypically because she is probably the most powerful force in the movie. She's the most. She's, she's definitely she's, the smartest character. She's in the, the movie. smartest character. She has the most common sense. She gives the best advice, and she won. She was the first black person, not just actress or actor, but first black person to win an Oscar. Mm-hmm. Now. The Academy's decision and the representation within the film are two very different things. Right. Um, the Academy did not honor another black person until Sidney Poitier in, what, 62, 63? Mm-hmm. 63. So uh, it's, it's important for that, but the, the treatment of the, the, the black characters is not quite as extreme as like an uncle Tom's cabin or song of the South would eventually be, or something that, that basically said slavery wasn't so bad. They just didn't bring it up. I mean, look, let me, let me give you a a context here. There's a, um, you look at the mammy character. Yes. Red is stereotypical, but again, the smartest person in the movie. You go back to the original Wizard of Oz, Mm -hmm. um, the one made in, I believe, 1925. The actor who played the cowardly lion was a black actor. Mm -hmm. And he's credited, and I'm not making this up, his name in the credits is G. Howe Black. Now, you come off of something like that, and then you get to Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind is far less you know that that's exactly how African Americans were portrayed in the movie. You're right. I mean, if you if you want to look at it from a different perspective, um, you can look at it uh, in a positive light, saying that at least the black actors were allowed to share the screen with the white actors. There, that's true. That's uh, very true. Which was not permitted on Birth of a Nation. Uh, D. W. Griffith, uh, if there were if there were black characters that had to interact with the white characters, uh, they were white people in blackface. Um, yeah. and and that even kind of went through um, a lot of into a lot of the silent pictures especially there were there were if if it wasn't if it was meant to be a a, 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 a more intelligent kind of a black person they, it would be a white person in blackface um, Othello was not played by a black person on the movie screen until 1992 or three when Lawrence 95. 95 when when it was uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne um, every other screen representation was a white man in blackface from uh, right. uh, uh, Lauren, Lawrence Olivier Orson Welles even though that picture is fantastic it is still Orson Welles in blackface right um, and that was in 52 mm-hmm. uh, you know so it, it, it's it doesn't go away, and it, it, it. You look at the movie. Let's look at the movie itself, because if you look at Gone with the Wind, this movie is not sentimental about the South. No. At all. No, it's really not. Um, it's well, I should say it's not uh, sentimental about the Confederacy. No. Um, there's a scene in the early in the movie which I think the people who are making this knee-jerk reaction to to yank the film. Um, are not looking at is when Rhett Butler is standing in that parlor and he says, all we've got is cotton and slaves and arrogance. Mm-hmm. And everyone around him starts calling him a traitor. Yeah, yeah. Now That's the view. Is so, yeah, that is that is the predominant view of the, of the picture. Uh, and slavery in this film exists around the edges. It does. It does not exist in the center. You never see... Um, the the 
Well, you see them out in the field, but you never see the whippings. You never see the, right. the chains. You never see any of that. It is not the central focus. It exists, but it is not. Um, and certainly, you never see anybody in blackface. No, and a lot of a lot of the that um, yeah, Selznick didn't want to broach the topic, but also, if you're going to have any kind of representation of slavery that is in any way, shape, or form uh, even remotely authentic, uh, like even the 1984. 1980 or 84, uh, PBS television uh, uh, version of um, 12 Years a Slave, starring Avery Brooks, um, doesn't have the amount of uh, violence that uh, the, the feature film directed by uh, Steve McQueen has mm -hmm. that, that won Best Picture for 2012. Um, because it was for television, and the, the, the production code at the time would not have allowed you to see right. the whippings and the, and the, the, the beatings and the torture Probably devices. didn't get that to Root. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you didn't get, yeah, Roots was really, and even that is muted because it was on television. So what is your opinion about the well, um, pulling the film? Because I don't you believe know, in censorship. I don't, I don't believe in censorship at all. I don't believe in censorship at, at all. And it, it, it pains me that, that taking the side of keeping the film in is taking the side that uh, uh, vocally the, the, the opponents of pulling the film uh, started with racists and white supremacists. Yeah. And, you know, people decrying... Uh, 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 political correctness which uh, political correctness is just treating people with respect uh when you get right down to it um in its best but, form uh, yeah now what what i have trouble believing and and maybe this is because uh uh i i i was born in 1981 which is kind of they've they've decided to give people like me born from like 80 to 85 the term exennial because we're mm -hmm. at the end of the generation x and at the beginning of the millennials depending on what study you you look at so in in one study we're gen xers and in the next study we're millennials so right. i don't identify with either um but the people in 2017 didn't know that this is how this picture was and that they are now suddenly uh, offended anew at the representations of, of, of black people in a movie that is 78 years old. It's like trying to say that they're applying their contemporary worldview on the past and you can't do that because things have changed a and it's lot. Silly because, and it's also silly because this has been part of the Orpheum Theaters Film Festival for 34 years. Yeah, I mean, why now? And they're just now? Why now? Why like, Why now? Uh, and, this is silly. And, and, you know. and, and, and I get being kind of upset by it because of the representation. It's not an easy sit. Um, mm -hmm. I watched it with my son, who is now 13. I think we watched it when he was 12. Uh, he wanted to see it, so I'm like, okay. But I had to pause it every once in a while and explain to him. See, he, he's, he's on the autism spectrum. I had to explain to him the derogatory terms were accepted then but are terrible now that uh what slavery was and how bad it was and how uh for people to say that black people should just get over slavery is one of the most ridiculous things i've ever heard in my life because this was the systematic uh, uh, uh subjugation of a people for 400 years mm -hmm. officially but it's still the effects of it are still felt today 
uh, but with, to to have a knee jerk reaction to like, something like to this, this is so silly. It's pointless because it's pointless. I mean, so uh, years ago, Warner Brothers re released some early Looney Tunes, um, and these early oh, Looney Tunes, yeah, yeah, they were were from the the early thirties, and. They are uncomfortable. They are they are difficult, but they they put a a, 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 a a warning up at the front of the disc, and they said that while these uh, cartoons are racist and insensitive and and just basically awful, they they acknowledge how bad they are in terms of 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 cultural assassination uh they say that they're putting them out anyway they could have killed them they could have destroyed them but to really negative yeah but to do that would be denying that this kind of thing ever took place and that yeah. is as much of an insult to the people who lived through it and who fought against it as it is to to just say that there's nothing wrong with them. And that And I don't believe in I don't believe in, in I don't believe in censorship in any form. And I don't believe in destroying the past because when you start destroying the past you're basically trying to wipe it off the face of the earth. It is important to remind a generation, this is how things were, this is how they were spoken. Nobody's going to see the Gone with the Wind, you know, is going to come away thinking slavery is good. Right. Nobody's going to come away from it like that. And nobody's going to come away from it, you know, with this insult. And if you, know, you do, you, know, you already thought that. Yeah, yeah. You, you take out of it with what you take in with you, if you think like that. So... You know, I don't think they should pull it. Um, the first time I saw this movie uh, was in its 60th anniversary. I actually, the first time I ever saw it was in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, which is a rare thing for something this this old, but that I didn't see it on television in any form. And I'm 18 years old. I go see it in this old movie house single screen movie house you probably didn't even think about it no i mean i was i was get i was very much into classic film at the time but i hadn't gotten around to gone with the wind because i knew how long it was mm -hmm. and um and it was it was playing and i'm like well what better way to see it than in a theater that I ran it. it in its original run the, the theater mm -hmm. was so old um my my great grandfather used to play piano for silent movies in that very theater yeah so it played there in its initial run 60 years previous so it's was, it, was, it was really cool to see it that way um mm. and you know to to be i don't remember who said it but uh one one of the one of the um great quotes in my life is just because you're offended doesn't mean that you're right right um if you're offended by it and it's it's portrayal don't watch it yeah i mean yeah. it's not by it's not hurt you. right by presenting it in 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 that kind of a a, a a venue in 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 a public screening venue the people who want to go see it will go see it. The people who don't want to go see it won't go see it. And it's really a personal prerogative. I mean, it's a great movie. It's one of the best movies ever made. It still is, yeah. It's, it's production value and direction and acting is, I mean, off the charts spectacular. I mean, it, when you approach it from a contemporary mindset, yeah, you're going to get upset by... The, the representations and the misrepresentations uh, all the way around. Uh, but this was almost 80 years ago before people thought the way that we do now or the way that we should now. And consensus thought now is vastly different than consensus thought then. 
Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't have even occurred to them at the time to make something realistic and respectful to uh, black Americans. And, and, and like we said, this is probably one of the best representations you can get for the time frame. From that time, yeah. I mean... Uh, so Look, my, my, my basic thing is um, you could do a lot worse. Now, if they had pulled Birth of a Nation, I would understand. If they oh, pulled sure. Any of the early, any of that Wizard of Oz movie from 1925, mm -hmm. I would understand because of the being insensitive. This is a, it. This feels like a knee-jerk reaction to a movie they haven't really looked at. They've only looked at yeah. the fact that there's slavery in it, and they haven't really looked at it as, as, it, as it should be. Or they may have seen clips, clips and without seeing the whole movie in its own context. Or heard the you know the man the the Prithi character who's oh, far more yeah. you know the um, you know I don't know nothing about birth no babies and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. This my my final re reaction to this and my ultimate reason why I wanted to bring this or suggested and wanted to bring this up is because if we start doing this, if we start pulling and we start you know pulling out anything any and everything that has any mention of something that might offend somebody, what's next? You know what's next? What, what are you gonna? There's not gonna be anything in any. Mo I mean, uh, people get people get offended argument. by the violence in a Tarantino movie. People get yeah. offended by uh, representation in a, a Marvel movie on on our Cave of Wonders podcast. We spent fifteen or twenty minutes talking about the whitewashing of the character of the ancient one who was supposed yeah. to be an an old That's Asian strange. man and not a, a middle aged white woman. Uh, so I mean now casting directors, directors, writers, producers should be more cognizant of inclusion, representation and trying to, to make their films look like what is real life, which is right. a lot of diversity. You don't just mm -hmm. look around and see monochromaticism everywhere. Um, That'll come up in a movie we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks. Yeah, um, well, a really bad movie, which, which tries to skew the world into a way of thinking that is simply not true. Yeah, that's going to open a turkey month in November. Um, but But... To to, and and I and I've said this twice already, but I think it bears this this repeating. This is this is why I feel passionately about that. Why why I feel the way I do about this, is that it, when you look at old movies, you can't bring your contemporary worldview to them, or your baggage. Your baggage. You can't because it's not it's not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't. You can't look at uh, you can't look at Citizen Kane and go, well, I saw the same camera moving Goodfellas. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that. that Forty nine that, that, years that. later, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I mean, that it's it's you know, I, I, years ago, I was talking to a to a guy that wanted to get into um, directing music videos. And he said, "I want to do something with this, with somebody just looking and 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 doing the, the actions in front of a mirror. I've never seen that before." And I said, "Oh, you mean like Taxi Driver?" Yeah. And yeah. he goes, "Oh, what, what what's that?" And I said, "Well, it's a Martin Scorsese <laughs> movie from 1976. Oh, it's old. I don't watch old movies." I said, "Well, then how are you going to know if something's ever been done before?" Exactly. <laughs> you know, like what I would say is this: this weekend. Watch Gone with the Wind. Don't worry about the reaction. Don't worry about it. This is so stupid. And I hate, I hate, I don't want this to, um, I don't want this to become, to balloon up into anything. Just that, this is a final note. I, again, do not believe in censorship in any form. Artistic expression is what it is. But the times are what they are. And Gone with the Wind has been a classic for thirty for seventy eight years, and it's been on this it's been on the Orpheum Theater's docket for thirty four years. Why now? Why why are you complaining about it? This is so stupid. Right, right. I mean, uh, 
and this this is this is going to be my final thought as well. It's like when you, when watching watching older movies, you you have to look at the times in which they were produced. Exactly. Judge them against the mindsets of the time and see if they are uh, they go with what what was believed if they go against it in a positive progressive fashion or uh if they go against it in a in a negative backwards fashion you you have to students of film also need to be students of history exactly um exactly films are history right you're you're not going to be able to understand the context in which films are uh, uh, presented or made or uh, how things are represented if you don't know about the times that A, the movie's set in, B, the mo- when the movie was made. Mm-hmm. If you don't know it, your knee- knee-jerk reactions are never appropriate uh, right. for, for anything. For, they don't anything. help. They don't. Especially in a case like this. Uh, so, I I also um, I I, impl- I implore you to judge it for itself and not uh, it's the the knee jerk. Well, this this is bad representation. Well, it was good for 1939, and you know my my wife likes the movie. Not a whole not not it's not one of her favorites, but. She does enjoy it, and I, I am in a mixed-race marriage. And, uh, you know, so these, these kinds of things are very prevalent and prominent in my mm-hmm. mind when I watch things. And um, I've gotten uncomfortable in, in watching older movies. Uh, there, there, was one, there was one movie that was one, one of Clark Gable's later movies where he, he played a, a, a plantation owner. Uh, he, he, and it was all... Uh, he was like the kindly master, and the, they all came up to greet him when he came to a southern planta- one of his plantations, mm-hmm. and they all sang for him when he got off the boat. And it, it, it was very uncomfortable because it was about a woman trying to pass for white. And yeah. um, I can't remember the name of it, but I've seen it. I saw it first on TCM, and then it was on again, and I, I, I picked it up near the end uh, again more recently. And that that was unsettled. That was uncomfortable to watch because it was obvious, and it was made in the fifties, and people should have known better. But yeah. But it, it, to wrap this up, I, that it was just something that was on my mind. I don't, you know, like I say, go watch the movie. I could talk for don't days listen. on this. So we could yeah, talk for days. we're gonna, we're going to we'll do an episode eventually on Gone with the Wind. But I just really wanted to talk about this because it was it yeah. was in the news. It's I mean, current. And, it's it's. Make your own decision. Um, like, Absolutely, like they should be permitting other people to do. Um, yes. It's 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 the height of arrogance to expect everyone to think, feel, and believe the way you do. Absolutely. And with that, I wanted to thank you for thank you for giving us a, a minute of your time so we could talk about this. And um, our new episodes are up every Monday. Thank you for listening. I'm Gary Dean Roberts, armchaircinema.com. You are? I am Doug Heller, talkmovietome.com. And thank you very much. See you next time. Yeah. Mission has been completed.